Let's look at the domain of a function and the intercepts of its graph. For example, let's find the domain of f and any x or y intercepts of its graph. Let's start with the domain. What's under the square root, namely this x plus 4, has to be greater than or equal to 0. Or subtracting 4 from both sides gives us that x has to be greater than or equal to negative 4, which is the domain of f. So let's write that in interval notation. Domain of f is equal to x has to be greater than or equal to negative 4, so close bracket at negative 4 up to infinity, which would be the domain. Now what about the intercepts of its graph? Well, let's let y equal f of x. In other words, y is equal to the square root of x plus 4 minus 1. Let's start by determining whether the graph of f has any x-intercepts. Well, an x-intercept, if it exists, is the x-coordinate of a point where the graph of f intersects the x-axis. And on the x-axis, y is equal to 0, isn't it? Therefore, if we set y equal to 0 in our equation, we can see if there's any x-intercepts. Doing this gives us 0 is equal to the square root of x plus 4 minus 1. And adding 1 to both sides, we get 1 is equal to the square root of x plus 4. And then squaring both sides, we have 1 squared is equal to the square root of x plus 4 squared. Or 1 is equal to x plus 4. And then subtracting 4 from both sides gives us x is equal to negative 3. So the graph of f does have an x-intercept. All right, what about the y-intercepts? A y-intercept, if it exists, is the y-coordinate of a point where the graph of f intersects the y-axis. And on the y-axis, what does x equal? It equals 0, doesn't it? So we set x equal to 0 in our equation here and solve for y. So we have y is equal to the square root of 0 plus 4 minus 1 or y is equal to 2 minus 1, or y is equal to 1, which is the y-intercept of the graph of this function. Now, can the graph of a function have more than one x-intercept or more than one y-intercept? There can be more than one x-intercept, but there cannot be more than one y-intercept. Because if this is indeed a function, then when x is equal to 0, there cannot be two different outputs for y. So therefore, there can be at most one y-intercept. All right, let's see another example. Again, let's find the domain of this function f and any x or y-intercepts of its graph. We'll begin with the domain again. The only issue with this function is if the denominator were equal to 0. So when does x squared minus 4 equal 0? This means that x squared is equal to 4, or x is equal to plus or minus 2. So we must exclude these values. That is, the domain of f, again written in interval notation, is negative infinity, up to negative 2, open parenthesis, because we cannot include negative 2. Union, again, open parenthesis at negative 2. Up to 2, again, open parenthesis. Union, 
open parenthesis, 2 up to infinity. And now to find the intercepts, again, we'll let y equal f of x. In other words, we have y is equal to x squared minus 9 divided by x squared minus 4. So let's start with the x-intercepts, which we can find if we set y equal to 0, which means we have 0 is equal to x squared minus 9 divided by x squared minus 4. Now, a fraction is equal to 0 when the numerator is equal to 0 and the denominator is not. So where is our numerator, x squared minus 9, equal to 0? This happens when x squared is equal to 9, or x is equal to plus or minus 3. And neither of these values make our denominator here 0. So they're both x-intercepts. And let's see if the graph of f has a y-intercept. Which we can find by setting x equal to 0. In other words, we have y is equal to 0 squared minus 9 divided by 0 squared minus 4. Or y is equal to 9 fourths. So the graph does have a y-intercept. And this is how we find the domain of a function and any x or y-intercepts of its graph. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.